Whenever you're pitching, there is a craft you can use to actually bring a compelling narrative. It's not just about opening your mouth and starting to speak. No. There is a craft. Craft basically means it's an art. It's something you have to learn to do. I've been teaching myself to do that so much so. And I know without a doubt that many times when I speak, people are actually are able to follow what I'm talking about. They are able to hear me from the beginning all the way to the end. And sometimes they even tell me, no, don't stop. Why is that so? Because I have understood the craft. <laughs> Now, I know in the Christian setup, we would call it the anointing. That's how, that's the word many people like using. Oh, that man is very anointed. But I think beyond being anointed, it's actually not beyond being anointed. Of course, be, anointing is very important. But I mean, uh, above that, if you don't know how to present it and how to do it, then definitely you will end up not having people understand you and having people not hear you. So the craft is crucial. You must have a craft to present or bring forth whatever it is that you're pitching. It has to be a craft. There has to be a way you can do it and do it effectively. Number one, a craft will entail having you bringing your presentation by starting strong. How you begin the first five minutes of your presentations most of the time will determine whether you're going to maintain the people. How strong you come in, the kind of narratives you're having, the kind of wordings you're having as you're beginning will always determine whether you're going to keep the people or not. There are people who will start speaking in the first five minutes and at the end of the day, people disconnect from them because they don't understand their narrative. It basically means that how you begin is actually what we call the hook, is what you use as a hook to, to compel the people, is what you use to hold the people. And what are some of the examples that you can use as a hook to hold the people in your first five minutes? You can start, number one, by telling them a story. You can actually begin your, your pitch by starting with, off with a story. You can start off your pitch by bringing in anything that is funny or anything that is, you know, humorous, like a joke. You can bring in in terms of a question. I mean, what you need to do is that whenever you're beginning, you need to start off with a hook that will cause the people to react in a certain way. Whether they're going to start reacting by laughing or they're going to start reacting by thinking about what you're telling them or by trying to answer the question that you have asked them, you must use a hook to be able to do that. Now I'm teaching you but if you find me in another different forum where probably I'm in before an audience and I'm talking to them a particular subject that has to do something else you will find me using some of those narratives sometimes. I don't go straight into the message and ignore the people. No, 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 no. We first warm up the people. It's called an icebreaker. You use it as a hook and once you use it as a hook and you have the, the attention of the people, then you start going into the process of starting out to present your message. Now listen to me, there is everything right when your message is simple and everything wrong when your message is complicated. Need to know that once you have hooked the people, the next thing is you start going into your message, but go into your message in a simplified manner. Avoid complicated narratives or complicated language. Avoid dictionary complicated terminologies. Or like today, if you go to a hospital and you are finding doctors talking about a patient, I'm going through right now a series on Netflix called Residence. And I enjoy when I see the way the doctors and the nurses are operating the hospitals and they are dealing with patients and all that. But believe me, you, when they are together, they are talking about a patient. If you have no idea what those medical terms are, you will completely be lost because they will be using that word and that word and that word. You will actually think they are speaking in another language different from your language different if you are an english speaking person you will think they are speaking in greek or they are speaking arabic or they are speaking something else why because they will use terminologies that you don't know and you have no understanding of now it's the same same problem when you are in a scenario where you speak a language you people don't understand what happens those people get lost they got disconnected they don't have an understanding exactly of what you're talking about that is why it is important whenever you are making your presentation you must keep it simple Keep 
keep it as simple as possible, but let it be loaded with substance. Don't forget my words. Let it be simple but loaded with substance. It's like you have gone to eat a meal in somebody's house, but the meal is not a complicated meal. But that simple meal when you are eating, because of the way it has been prepared, the way it has been cooked, some of the ingredients that have been put in that food, it is so nice and so beautiful that you are enjoying it, yet it is not complicated at all. It has a simple meal, but a sweet, sweet, sweet meal. So you have to simplify your message. In simplifying your message, it basically means you are defining your issue clearly. You are bringing the problem that people may have and the solution that would follow because of them accepting that which you're offering to them. You are breaking down things bit by bit. So much so by the end of your message, it is so feasible to them and it is so clear to them that the only thing they're telling you is that we want it, we want to sign up, we want to be part and parcel of what you are saying or what you're doing. Simplifying your message is very important. And then the third thing, and this is so crucial, is there is no way you can start off, do your presentation, and then go home without asking for what we call a call to action. You have to end your presentation always with a call to action. The biggest mistake you can do is to spend the time with somebody or spend the time with an audience or spend the time trying to say something and then you don't have a call of, a call of action. A call, what is a call of action? A call of action is where you're actually asking people to commit themselves to something. Is it, that you, is it something you want them to buy? Let them commit to buying it. If it is actually available at that moment, let it be bought. Because why? Because that's the reason as to why you've done all the things that you've done. Call for action is important. In our Christian setup, that is what we normally call altar call. You have talked and talked and talked and then at the end of the day you ask people, is there somebody who wants to be born again? Let them lift up their hands. Is there somebody who wants to be healed? Let them be, that's called a call to action. You are making them commit themselves to something. You can never be a presenter. You can never pitch anything and then leave people hanging. You have to commit them. They, you must bring them to a place of commitment. And believe me you, if you have done a good job, the commitment level will be high. If you have done a bad job, the commitment level will be low. There will be no response. You will be wondering, what was I doing? I spoke all this and nobody's responding. It's because probably you did do a very good job. And by the way, I like saying this. One of the ways of evaluating your presentation or one of the ways of evaluating yourself after a presentation is how people have responded after you finish your presentation. When you ask them to buy it, did they buy it? When you ask them to do a particular thing, did they do that thing? When you ask them to sign up, did they sign up? When you ask them to respond and commit to supporting that thing in a certain way, did they do it? If they don't do it, there is a problem probably not with them, but with you in terms of how you did your pitch. You probably didn't pitch good enough. You probably didn't pitch a clear enough pitch or you probably didn't make it understandable enough to them so that they wanted to commit themselves to it. Listen to me. You have to know this is a craft. Take time to prepare yourself. Take time to practice. Take time to make sure that every ethic that is involved in the craft, you know it and you're engaged in it and you're going and you're ready for it. You can make as much money as you want. All you need to do is to know how to make your pitch. You can get people behind you as much as they can. All you need to do is to know how to make your pitch. Part of the reason why you find some people you least expected to hold roles of leadership or to hold roles of uh, places you least expected is because some of them understand the craft and they know it and they know how to do it very well. Guys, I love you so much. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, remember, we are making this family bigger and bigger and bigger. And how are we doing it? We are doing it by subscribing. If you are here for the first time and you have not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do so. Become part of this family and the Lord bless you so much. Now, please, I would love to hear from you. Make comments. Let me just at least hear something from you. At the same time, I want to see you sharing this content share with people, engage people in hearing what you are hearing, and let's help people to do things better than they're doing. I love you so much. Now, remember what I always say as I conclude, let's meet in the land and the field of the millionaires because that's where you and I belong. 
I believe in you and I know you can succeed. God bless you and see you in the next video and bye-bye.